Consider the given rectangular channel and 15 foot wide sluice gate. After the hydraulic jump, the depth is measured at 10 feet and the velocity is at 5 feet per second. Find the Freud number before the jump. So over here, we have our rectangular channel. We have a backlog of water over here in a reservoir or something. We have the open sluice gate. We can see the water moving through it here, going up a hydraulic jump, and becoming a new depth over here. So this is section one, this is section two. These correspond to either before the jump or after the jump. So I'll be the first to admit that I find this problem annoying. It's totally solvable, but it's going to make you solve for a bunch of other unknowns on both sides of the hydraulic jump before you can solve for the actual Freud number in section one before the jump, which is what they're looking for. So let's get to it. Step one, we're going to want to solve for the total flow in the channel. This part is easy. So Q equals V2A2, since we are given the velocity after the jump. So this is going to be five feet per second times the area, which is going to be the 15 foot width of the sluice gate and the channel and the 10 foot depth measured. Solving for this, we get Q equals 750 feet cubed per second. Step two, let's find the Freud number, not in section one where it's looking for, but rather in section two. So the equation on page 343 is going to give us what we need. So FR in this case is given as V over the square root of G times Y sub H. So we've got our velocity, which is five feet per second on that side of the jump, 32.2 feet per second squared times 10 feet square root. And this is going to give us a Freud number of 0 0.28. This is good because it's less than one, and if we remember our information about Freud number, if it's less than one, it's in the subcritical region, which we can see over here. Moving on to step three, we're going to find the depth in section one using the values found for section two. So this equation will come from a group of equations on page 353. So find y1, y1, over y2 equals one half one plus eight times the Freud number in section two squared. This quantity square rooted minus one. That's an annoying thing to solve, but we can do it. So y1 over 10 feet from y2 equals one half one plus eight times 0 0.28 squared minus one. So again, this is annoying to solve in your calculator, but if you do it right, you should come out to a Y1 of about 1.37 feet. Step four, we're almost there. Solve for Solve for velocity in section one. So we know our Q, so V1 in this case is going to be Q over A1. Now that we have our Y1, we can get A1. So that's going to be 750 cubic feet per second over 15 feet, because the width is constant throughout the entire channel, times 1.37 feet. And that's going to give us just about 36.6 feet per second. 
5. Finally, we can find the Freud number where it's asking for before the hydraulic jump. So it's the same equation that we used to find Freud number in the first section. We were just, well, in the second section, but Freud number the first time. Now we have the terms we need to find it in the first section before the hydraulic jump. So FR1 equals V1 over the square root of G sub Y sub one. Sorry, whatever I mumbled out there. Um, so 36.6 .6 feet per second over 32.2 feet per second squared times 1.37 feet square root. And if we get that, we should solve for a Freud number before the jump of 5.5. This logically makes sense as well because the Freud number is greater than one. We can tell that this is in the supercritical region here. Granted, all of the answers are in the supercritical region, but this is the one it came out to. So keep in mind that this question could have also asked you to solve for Freud number in section two instead and given you the values you needed from section one. So for that reason, it's probably worth reviewing the other equations on page 353, just to see some of the other ways that they could have expressed this and things that you could have solved for instead. And that's it.